This is Chicho. Welcome to my channel. Now, what I would like to do um, is sort of uh, start sharing some of the behind the scenes um, work that I do or some of the behind the scenes stuff that goes along uh, with the math videos. Because um, if you've been following my channel, you know there's sort of three areas where I'm creating math content. One of them is uh, ASMR math, another one is the language of mathematics, and the third one is uh, math in real life. Um, ASMR math is sort of um, going to be uh, each module is going to be sort of uh, completed on its own and it's going to complement everything that we're doing for the language of mathematics and math in real life because that's where I've spent a lot of time and created a lot of content and I have a lot of uh, uh, material work that I still have to go through, right? Um, so what I'd like to do is uh, sort of uh, start creating videos that are sort of uh, acting as a glue, sort of bringing the content from math in real life uh, and the language of mathematics together with ASMR math. And um, one place I wanted to start uh, was basically um, sort of let you know what my mindset is going to be, uh, what the content is that we're going to create in the next batch of videos uh, for math in real life, which is sort of connected with uh, the series that we're doing in the language of mathematics, which is series four, which is units and ratios, graphs and functions. Okay, and um, if this seems a little complicated, it, it, it really isn't. It's just giving a name to, um, you know, categorizing the content coming up. And they're sort of all just gonna be meshed together at some point, put together to create modules, to, you know, teach, um, a certain concept of mathematics or a certain branch if anybody wants to learn a certain type of mathematics to do whatever it is that want, they want to do, right? So um, the general gist of it is the language of mathematics is going to be the syntax of the language of math, you know, how, how you do things, right? The algorithm of mathematics, right? Studying the language itself, the structure of it and how you work with it. Math in real life is going to be taking some of the syntax from the language of mathematics and applying in a real world. And we've already done some of that stuff um, for math in real life. We haven't created too much content, but the content we've created that uh, I really like, and we've done some collaborations with a couple of friends of mine, actually two or three uh, friends that I have. Um, uh, two of the series that we started is um, the mathematics of art and design, and the other one is the mathematics of farming, right? Growing your own food. And we're gonna do a whole bunch more stuff for math in real life. Um, which is basically what this video is about, which is sort of giving you the behind the scenes um, thought process, uh, how I'm going to go uh, create the next, it's either gonna be two to four videos. Um, I have the stuff laid out, but um, the way I do math in real life in the language of mathematics, I sort of, you know, grab my tripod, chalk, uh, you know, my walking shoes and whatever supplies I need and I, usually go for a nice long walks, uh, listen to music and look for walls to do some mathematics on, right? So the content that's created for the language of mathematics and math in real life, whatever you've seen so far, uh, which is sort of, I guess, I don't know, urban math, graffiti style math, however way you want to think about it, if you will have given it a, uh, a few different types of names, right? Um, but. Uh, basically the way I've been doing the language of mathematics and math in real life, uh, the content being created is sort of dependent on the type of walls that I find and how much, how much um, of the material I can cover in one shoot. Sometimes I, you know, I do multiple shoots of a certain uh, concept I'm trying to get across. And in general, if I get about 80% of what I've laid out to get, a get across, get across uh, in the video, I consider that to be done and I edit it and I load it up, okay? Um, and the third type of math that we're doing is sort of ASMR math, which sort of, you know, grew out of um, me doing ASMR, getting exposed to ASMR and deciding to start creating videos and contribute to uh, the community. Uh, sort of that sort of meshing, sort of coming together with mathematics because uh, um, I made, I think, a couple of videos or 
not even I hadn't even made ASMR math videos where I started making just ASMR videos and some people commented saying um, they get anxiety basically uh, when they study math uh, so it would be amazing if I could combine the ASMR and the mathematics together and I started doing that and uh, I love the content coming up uh, it's allowing me to get more than 80 percent of some of the ideas i want to get across um, that i'm you know that's the limit i'm putting myself for math in real life in the language of mathematics i can sort of go on rants and asmr math and um, sort of open up a little bit more and not worry about getting the core ideas across right away i can you know let the imagination take over right uh, and one of the main series uh, playlists one of the first modules I believe I'm going to put out uh, for the mathematics content for all three of these uh, sort of playlists that we're creating is going to be trigonometry because I really you know like what we've done so far I have the rest of it all laid out uh, in my notes and um, you know it'd be a very nice module to put out because it is uh, trigonometry is uh, as far as I see it trigonometry and logs in grade 12 is the one that's uh, you know the killer really trig seems to be the killer that takes a lot of people out out of the game and it's you know slowed and introduced in grade 8 9 10 it sort of builds up and every level every year acts as a filter and you know people drop out because they can't wrap their head around trig which in my opinion is the wrong way to teach it i think if you're going to learn trig the best way to do it is start from the highest level concept and then look into the details going down to a certain degree right give the big picture and then look at the little parts of it which is sort of the way i'm approaching uh, uh, the trig module that we're creating okay so those are the three branches uh playlist main playlist playlist we have for the math content i'm creating okay sort of a long-winded intro i guess um but what i'd like to do right now is uh let you know what the next set of videos are going to be coming out and they're going to be for math in real life and they're connected to uh what we did for the last video for asmr math which is basically um looking at uh time and trying to quantify time or the a perspective of time or the way we experience time right so we talked a little bit about that and um, we created tables and looked at numbers just absolute numbers the ratios and just comparing the ratios and numbers and the multiples between them right so what I got laid out uh, sort of that's connected with that is going to be again anywhere between two to four videos for math in real life taking the concept of ratios and applying that um, to what we're doing, taking the information, the, the syntax of the language, how to work with ratios, units, fractions, what we've doing in series four, and we're gonna apply that in math and real life and take a look at the same concept, which is um, how we experience time, the perception of time. But instead of looking at it in table form, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a couple of graphs and connect that up to one of the previous videos we did for the language of mathematics, which was how to break a line into pieces, right? So, so the first video coming out uh, that's linking up with the previous ASMR video is gonna be just talking about how, you know, we can take basically the columns we talked about in ASMR math and sort of put them on a number line. Now, these are sort of the notes I make. Um, uh, you know, I have a few, you know, a few booklets uh, over the years and I got a stack of booklets where I sort of lay, lay out the different uh, lessons, I guess, or videos that I lay out and I sort of link everything up, right? And usually in general, I like to shoot things in batches. Uh, sometimes they're solo videos, sometimes they're two videos connecting up, sometimes they're three or four or five videos, sometimes it's a whole series that I, you know, take a whole summer uh, to do over a few weeks where it links up. Um, so it really depends, but I have a, you know, a few booklets like this where I've laid out a lot of material and this is just the one we're going to do in the next two to four videos, which is basically take the concept of time, link it up to how you know we broke a line into pieces uh 
right? So we're going to take a line, taking age from zero to, you know, we talked about 90, but we're going to take it up to 100 and then breaking that into 15 increments and seeing the multiple through that way. So we're visualizing what we talked about in ASMR math and talking about that concept, which is sort of introducing ratios. And then we're going to take that ratios and create a 2D graph, right? With an X and Y axis with, um, again, you know, we have the X axis and the Y axis and uh, kicking that up and seeing how that links up with an exponential function, right? With kicking up and then taking a look at different forms of the graphs we can take depending on what variable we look at or what ratios we compare, right? Um, and from there, you know, have laid out maybe taking it to um, a three-dimensional graph. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it. Um, where you're weighting the information, which connects up again to, you know, a line. We're going to do it as a scale system. We're not really going to break it into pieces, but we're going to do a pivot. So we're going to go into introducing positive and negative numbers, right? So, you know, I have it laid out like this. I'm not sure how far we're going to go into this. And then, you know, we connect it up with the scale system with, um, you know, talking about probability. Well, it, we won't talk about probability in this, but this sort of links up with probability, which we will do at some point later, right? So I like to leave things open-ended. Um, so depending on, um, you know, the walkabout that I do, I've done a, a few walkabouts right now, and it's uh, just getting the feel for the city. Um, you know, the weather is a little different. Uh, it's sunnier here, rains less than Vancouver, which is a good thing. Uh, but it's a windy city. I didn't realize Victoria was such a wind, windy city. So um, I think what I'll have to do is when the wind, wind dies down the city is try to hit up uh, the area. So I'm going to put a lot of miles on and, you know, walk around, bike around, drive around maybe and uh, start locating some areas, some places where I see nice walls where we can do this work, right? Um, so that's sort of the behind the scenes um, um, of what's going on, uh, sort of the rhyme and reason of all the material coming up. I know some of the stuff uh, may seem disjointed. Um, some of the stuff is disjointed. Some of the stuff is just, you know, random, just being loaded on. And then there's some stuff that's really linked up with everything else, which sort of loops back to a different concept, either touching base on math in real life or language of mathematics. So all three of those playlists are going to be sort of linking. And slowly what we're going to do is, um, is create modules and put content together and, uh, you know, complete modules with texts and exercises and solutions and all that jazz and have booklets and videos you know for each either um, concept in math or for anything that we want to do um, with math in real life right wherever you want to use mathematics in your life um, so that's where I am right now with the mathematics videos um, and uh, uh, we'll see how far we get. Uh, I'm not sure how fast this stuff is going to be loaded on. Uh, if I'm able to find, uh, navigate the city fast, then the stuff will be coming faster and faster. Uh, if I can get out there and uh, shoot on multiple days in a row. And um, one other thing I should mention um, before uh, I finish off this, uh, this little behind the scenes uh, aspect of it, um, for those of you following the ASMR math videos, um, the videos that I make when I go out um, uh, looking for walls in the city and whatnot, usually I try to get in and out as fast as I can um, wherever it is that I'm doing the shoot. So the language of mathematics and math in real life videos in general are going to be a faster beat, faster pace than what's uh, being produced for ASMR math. Um, so, you know, it, it's just the way it's most likely going to work out. Uh, and I do like that fast pace because I can get as many ideas, as many concepts in as fast as I can. Um, and I like the, the feel of going into a place and, um, you know, 
seeing what I can do, see how much information I can put on a wall, um, work in an area, and usually that requires, uh, you know, a faster pace for me to work at uh, to put the content out. Okay, um, and if you do, if there's anything in language and mathematics and math in real life that you would like done in ASMR format, please let me know. Um, and I'll see what I can do about it because whatever I cover, um, some of the concepts uh, are pretty important concepts. They're sort of glues, they're sort of binding um, that connects one, um, one branch of math to another, or one concept to another. If that glue is not there, it's hard to make the jump. So if the content in the language of math and math in real life, I think it's important as well to cover in ASMR math. Let me know and I'll, um, I'll try to get it done. Okay. Um, I hope you enjoy. We'll see what we can uh, get done. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.